and very welcome to the Camogie Report podcast. Um, it's a very special podcast today as we're recording it here in the County Camogie grounds in Drag for the first time ever in-person podcast. And I'm delighted to be joined by Enda Tracy, a sports journalist with the Tipperary Star and Drumlinch Camogie player Marion Campion. And also on Zoom, we have Thomas Conway, sports journalist with the Nina Garage. And so folks, you're very welcome. And um, we're going to preview the All-Ireland Championship that's kicking off this weekend. The Glen Dimplex Junior and Senior uh, All-Ireland Championship begins this Saturday. A fantastic double header here in the County Camogie grounds in Drag. The first game is at 2 p.m. to Tiberi against Cavan in the junior, and then at 5 p.m. to Tiberi meet Clare again for the third time in a couple of weeks uh, in the senior championship. Um, so just looking at the schedule of games, Tip and Clare uh, at home this weekend. The following weekend, Tip are away to Dublin. This is the senior. Then we're uh, home to Waterford on the 4th, 5th of June. Then on the 18th, 19th of June, we're away to Wexford and finish off with a game away to Cork. So a hectic schedule there, the senior championship. In the junior championship then, beginning this weekend, they're home to Cavan. The following weekend, they're away to Mayo. Uh, the following weekend, home to Clare, and then they have a couple of weeks off, and then the last game then is um, away to Warford. So a busy schedule, and just the senior then is top two in each group to the semi-final, and second and third to the quarter-final, while in the junior championship, the top two in each group into semi-final. So a great summer of Camogie ahead, and we'll begin just to have a preview of the senior championship. Um, I suppose before we look forward, we need to look back, and Thomas, I'm going to go to you. Um, you were in Ballinasloe, I suppose, the final group game in the league. Um, lost to Galway, controversial free at the end, uh, a red card early in the game that was later rescinded. But I suppose the general mood after the game was one of optimism. Um, when you compare that to maybe now after the defeat against Clare two weeks ago in the Munster Championship, I would it be fair to say you're a bit more nervous now and less, maybe less optimistic going into the Championship? Yeah, it, it has been a reversal of fortunes, Geraldine. I mean, as you say there, the performance in Galway was hugely promising. Tip were exceptionally unlucky that day not to come out with a with a result, with a win, really. And I mean, there were debatable refereeing decisions on the day. As you say, Casey Hennessy's red carriage later rescinded. Uh, you had the free at the end, which Rebecca Henley stuck over. Now, Galway, it must be said, they demonstrated in the league final that... You know, when push comes to shove and when it comes to the crunch, you know, they can deliver. And that's why they're all Ireland champions. But Tip showed and Tip proved definitively that they have it in them to challenge a team like Galway, to challenge the All-Ireland champions. So, I mean, you, you know, against that backdrop, you uh, you had the you, you had a, a, an easy win over Limerick then. Subsequently, everything seemed to be running smoothly. I think most people, myself included, anticipated that Tip would be contesting the Munster final. I, I think we kind of had Clare written off, but we were proven wrong. Um, and, you know, where it, it's probably easy to focus on Tip's inadequacies or Tip's failings, you have to give huge credit to Clare because they demonstrated over the course of the two games, the second game in particular, that they really are a force to be reckoned with. Um, they play a game which is not dissimilar from uh, the game which the Cork Hurlers play. It, it's very intricate, full of kind of short stick passing. Uh, and when it works, it can look, you know, it can work spectacularly well. And it did that that second day in the Gaelic grounds. As against that, Tip looked, uh, they looked exhausted. They looked out of ideas. Um, and, and they looked lacking in energy. And I think that was something that I picked up off from the tip management after the game and even the players, that there was maybe a realisation that maybe we've been pushing these girls very hard since, since what, the start of February. The drum girls had a, had a club championship campaign behind that. And maybe there were the first signs of fatigue creeping in. So, like, I mean, where you have to give credit to Clare, you have to give huge credit to Clare, you also have to say that Tip um, probably did show, you know, did start to show those signs of fatigue. And I would imagine these past these past couple of weeks since the last Clare game, they have really focused on kind of uh, recovery and rehabilitation. I, I wouldn't say there was any very, you know, strenuous hard training sessions in between. I think those games demonstrated that Tip um, were just lacking in energy and conviction and 
I, I wouldn't become too pessimistic because I know we know this tip what this tip team have in them. We know they can challenge the the top teams in in inter county Camogie. So I would expect a serious. Um, serious revival against Clare the next day. Whether it'll be enough to beat Clare, um, one only knows because Clare now, you know, you would Clare could rank as as number four. I mean, it's Tip and Clare. Uh, you know, they they seem to be the main challengers now. So it will be an intriguing context the next day. I mean, you know, I suppose the edges with Clare psychologically, but then again, Tip will, you know, they really, really want to win this game. They really want to avenge that defeat. And I think, you know, they'll want to prove to themselves that, uh, you know, that they are genuine challengers because they've heard enough of, you know, they've got to enough semifinals. They haven't yet delivered silverware. That was something Quat Devan said to me last week. And that is their objective for this season. So I, I would expect, you know, a revival against Clare the next day. Whether it will be enough, one only knows. Yeah, and uh, picking up on that point, I suppose Thomas mentioned there, maybe fatigue, tiredness. Um, do you think that was the case against Clare? Or what would your analysis of that game be? Yeah, there was an element of that, I think, especially in the first game. Like I think it's uh, fair to say that we were lucky to... Um, to get out of that game with a draw and I think the, the right result came from the from the replay. Look, the Bill Bill Bill's pragmatic enough, like he knows that he needs a big panel going into the championship for the last few years when, when we've come to crunch in all Ireland semi-finals. Maybe the lack of options off the bench has cost us with bigger panels. And uh, I think he's been trying the same cluster of players, a lot of new faces like Claire Hogan and Cleve McCarthy and Courtney Ryan, like all these players coming in and he's given them a fair twist to get up to the speed. Um, we know that, that, that there's players to come back in and we know what they can do and they've proved it over the years. But it's nice to supplement those players with players that have built up experience over the league and the Monster Championship. And they've played well as well. It's not a case of they're getting game time and they're not producing it. They have been producing it. And um, look, at, I think it's maybe it's a bit of Bill has one eye. Well, that, 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 that might tip optimism on Bill with one eye in the All-Ireland and he want, wants the team to peak for them and bring him back Arena Friday and Cole Walsh kind of win them back into action over the few games as well. So, look, you preferably you would have wanted a game against Cork in the Munster final if you won Silverware, great. Um, obviously, that's the one thing Bill hasn't achieved with the team. He's he's made great strides with them, but look, you, you want to be peaking in for championship. This team wants to get to an All-Ireland final. That's That's the goal at the start of the year. I'm sure Bill is aware that and all the players are as well. So a tiredness creeping in, but I, I think they're probably doing a heavy block of training as well, leading up to trying to peak in time. So look, it's not all doom and gloom like uh, Claire. It'll be hard for Claire to go three games in the bounce after after playing tip and um, we know what they're about, we know what, where, where their strengths lie and hopefully we'll be able to count for that in the day. Yeah, just picking up on that point then, Miriam, um, you know, Claire obviously I suppose maybe we can be a bit overcritical of the tip forms as well and not giving Clare enough credit. I mean, that's, you know, a very good Clare side. We've seen them over the two games against tip and against Cork at the weekend. You know, they took Cork all the way to two bouts of extra time before Cork, I suppose, seemed to get the legs on him in extra time. They outscored him six points to a goal. Um, but look, Clare were very impressive that day. They were really strong. Um, spine of the team with the likes of Emer Kelly then Anya Lachlan and the forwards as well and um, there, you've seen them Miriam were you impressed with Claire? Yeah I think maybe a lot of people would have been disappointed with maybe Tip's performance that first day out and would have questioned maybe were Tip off the pace this year but then you know seeing Claire then below in, in the Gaelic grounds the last day you know there was no question with that result, I think Clare were the better team on the day. And, you know, I think maybe Tip, again, maybe would have thought that that could have been a game that they should have been winning. But then seeing that result in that monster final, it kind of showed that Clare, maybe they have brought up brought it up another level maybe this year. Um, you know, Cork would have been considered one of those top three t um, teams they would have been competing in. You know, your your monster finals, winning your monster finals, you know, competing in the All Ireland series, winning all Irelands, and you know, this clear team then they draw with them in the monster final, bringing them to extra time 
all that, that kind of shows a lot from that clear performance as well. And I think, you know, they can take great confidence from that going into the All-Ireland series as well. So. Yeah, they definitely will take great confidence, but I suppose the one, it's hard to know who's at the advantage now on Saturday, Thomas. Um, you know, tip, very hard for Clare to turn around two weeks and later and try to beat tip again. Um, you know, tip obviously were knocked back with the defeat against Clare. Clare, I suppose, obviously they'd be disappointed losing to Cork, but still, you know, they would be very proud of the performance. They had great support down there. They'd have a great support here on Saturday. So I'm just wondering, psychologically, who has the advantage now? Is it Tip that had the week off, had a break, had time to refocus, re-energise? Or is it Clare that are going in with real momentum, who could say with three solid performances behind them, albeit they lost against Cork, but they still had a really good game. But then there's obviously the tiredness, extra, extra, extra time. So who, who do you think is advantage that way? Well, I, I actually think Clare have a definite psychological edge on this one. I think you cannot understate the significance of beating Tip in the circumstances that they did. The fact that they were, you know, I would say kind of extreme underdogs coming into those those two games. Even when they forced the replay, I think a lot of us thought that Tip would shift into gear in the Gaelic rounds and, uh, you know, toss them aside fairly fairly swiftly. But that wasn't the case. Now I do, I, I do think we do have to factor in the at uh, the game last weekend and the element of fatigue that might be there. And I suppose you know, looking at it from the tip side, they're going to be really, really hungry. Uh, those players to avenge that clear defeat. It, it's very rare you get such a a quick turnaround. You get an opportunity to to play kind of. Um, to play the team that beat you in quick succession just a couple of weeks later. So, I mean, that is probably a, a bit of an advantage to tip. But I think Clare will enter this one with, with serious momentum. I mean, you think of the, just think of the, the repercussions if tip lose were to lose this game. I mean, suddenly you've gone from a situation where you're viable All-Ireland contenders. Um, you've, you've then been knocked out of the Munster Championship. You've lost your first game in the Championship. And suddenly things ain't so rosy um, and people really start asking questions. And, and you know, beyond that, you've a tough trip to uh, uh, to Parnell Park to face Dublin. I think they're down in, in Wexford. Are they down in Wexford to play Wexford? Oh, um, you know, those are tough places to go, um, regardless of what kind of what kind of Dublin or Wexford side you're playing. So I think Tyre have a psychological edge here. I think Tip will be very, very hungry to avenge that defeat. But I mean, hunger is one thing, um, uh, you know, and when channeled correctly, it, it can do great things, but you cannot let it cloud the, the the tactical picture. The You know, if Tip can go out here all guns blazing and they can still make mistakes, you know, motivation will only get you so far. I mean, execution really is the key in games such as this. And Claire's execution the last day was just, you know, ultra precise it, it was you know it was it was brilliant to watch at times um and if they can do something similar um next weekend in the rag i mean you know you would worry for tip yeah and i suppose my worry would be like i could probably tell you what the clear team is going to be quicker than i can tell you the temporary team um i mean last year you take it in crow park against galway in the all-iron semi-final our half back the line was Aoife mcgrath karen kenny in center and ray Davison on the other wing Mairead Everson and Karen Kennedy uh, both recovering from surgeries. Uh, I believe Mairead is back to in contact and, you know, is likely to feature sooner rather than later. Uh, Karen, I think, is further down the line. But, Miriam, you've played with Karen Kennedy. Like, she has been a um, fantastic player for TIP the last few years. She's been our number six. And I feel at the moment we don't know who our number six is. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would, I suppose, in a way. Um, I think they've tried out a couple of different options at number six, but most definitely Karen is a massive loss. Um, you know, even in terms of her attack from the back and, you know, starting, um, you know, in the wing back line, I think there is a, a, a huge gap there in, you know, with both Maraid and Karen. And if we could get them players back on the field before the knockout um, end of the championship and hopefully we do get to that stage, I think it will be um, a massive addition. You know, I think 
Clodagh Cork is, um, is, is on the verges of, of some game time as well. Um, I know she's back training in the last um, couple of weeks at full tilt, so it would be great to see even herself and Maraid back in action um, in the next couple of games and then maybe Karen later on in the championship. But, you know, I do think that Tip do need, you know, at least two out of three of those players sooner rather than later because they are, you know, for experience, for vocality and all and all the likes, um, I think Tip do need to get um, the likes of them back on the field too. So... Yeah, just um, I suppose we've seen Courtney Ryan was centre back last year with the Tip Intermediates. She's been bought into the senior panel. She's been played centre back uh, on a few occasions this year. Quiva Matter started the first round of the championship against Limerick, had to go off injured. Um, maybe Bill was looking at Quiva coming into the first round of the All Ireland Championship. Uh, and uh, it's a huge, you know, gap to fill at number six. And I think it's, I suppose, it's a huge decision the management need to make now. Yeah, it is a big decision and it's it's very tempting with those players coming back if they're looking good in training to just throw them in at the deep end. Um, but look, you have to have the long-term view as well. It's five games in the group and look, with, with the format of the championship, you're looking at minimum top three, you'll be looking at a minimum quarter-final, worst-case scenario if you're to lose a couple of games. So you have to think long-term as well, but if Cuiva Maher is available, I'd probably play her just to... Just for a bit of um, continuity there, she has been playing well well enough when she's played there in the league. Um, actually, I've been pretty impressed with her there. Uh, look, you prefer to have Karen there and settled um, with games under her belt, but don't have that luxury at the minute. You have the option of bringing them on if things aren't going well, but I, I think Bill will want to keep some sort of continuity in the team that he has been playing. Um, and they'll want revenge, there's no doubt about that. Um, maybe there was a bit of complacency in, in coming into those Clare games, but... Look, if, if it was me, I'd be weaning the, the experienced girls that are coming back from injury. I'm sure the, the, the medical staff will have told Bill that he, he, he won't be doing anything rash. So, look, I think we, we have enough there to, to, to be dealing with Claire at home. Um, the home games are very important, obviously. You need to be winning all your home games. Um, and as you said there, it's a good point. Claire have had a very set team. A lot of her strong team has been played consistently through the league and through the Munster Championship. And, in fairness, they looked like a team that were well settled and well drilled into what they were doing. Settled team out there, Neo D and Anya Lachlan there in the forwards and the, in the dailies there as well. We've seen what they can do, do from the club action. So, um, Tip don't have that at the minute with people coming back from injuries and different things. So, look, Cueva Maher centre back, I think, can go from there and see how it goes. Yeah, and I suppose I don't want to be talking too much about, you know, last year or players who aren't available, but, but I think it's important to point out that. Um, you know, the likes of Cream Blair, Sarah Delaney, Sarah Corrine, they were being played in the league. Um, you know, Corrine and Sarah got a lot of game time last year, did very well any time to come on or started in the championship last year. Um, but unfortunately, you know, they made decisions since the league that to go on J ones for the summer. And look, you can't blame any young person. There's a tight window there of opportunity to go on J ones. Um, you can't blame them for deciding that, I suppose, especially after a COVID hit two years, you know, people are probably keen to, to, to go somewhere and, and, you know, who knows what's around the corner. But that was a big blow for um, the management team when you have your injuries. And obviously we're missing Orla as well from the championship team last year. So from the starting 15 last year, so far this year, we've been without Murray, Karen and Orla. But on the positive side, um, Claire Hogan for me has been, you know, excellent. Uh, she's come up on the intermediates and she's really excelled. Um, Casey Hennessy is really fine in form that we've seen a few years ago. Uh, Claude McIntyre, the, um, the three of them, Miriam is fair to say, looking at pace in the forwards, I felt like they looked at the Galway match last year and maybe were thinking ahead to Crow Park down the line. We need pace in the forwards and I think uh, Claude, Casey and Claire bring that to, to the setup. Would you agree? Yeah, I think most definitely there is pace up there and if you can get the ball into them players, you know, they, they, they will leave their their markers at sea, I think. And that's the big thing, getting good quality ball into them. You know, um, I don't think any of the three are blessed with height. So, you know, playing it to their advantage, maybe on, on the outside and getting them on that ball. And, you know, if they can get their head down um, and attack the goals, I think there will scores come from it. And even, you know, you have caught there as well, um, you know, to, to add to that. So even, you know, if the, if the option isn't there, when they are running at it, 
there there is the um you know the, the outside ball again and I'm sure herself um you know Jenny and um Roshan would be well capable of popping those scores but there is pace up there if you can get the ball into them um you know um quick enough and I think they 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 will they, they will be well accustomed to the to the Komogi field as well so I think that is going to be um to their advantage. So just uh, looking ahead to Saturday, how key is it to get off to a winning star? Thomas mentioned there, uh, we have to go away to Dublin, we've Waterford at home, go away to Wexford. Um, like, I suppose we've been thinking of the, the Kilkenny's, the Galway's, uh, the Corks, and trying to get a scalp off them. But I suppose, like, so Wexford, Clare, Dublin, they'll all see Tipperary as a team that they can beat. And, you know, how crucial is the winning start for Tip on Saturday? Yeah, I think it's very important and in a way, Clare, they, they have had three games on the trot and this is going to be their fourth weekend out and I think, you know, having the home advantage and having, you know, the week or so to recoup and maybe work on things that um, needed to be worked on, that is going to be um, pivotal on Sunday and I, or Saturday and I think if Tip can get that game under the belt, it will bring a great confidence back into the side as well. And, you know, you've Waterford, then Wexford, you know, they're games that Tip should be winning. Um, you know, maybe maybe that um, game there against Cork is the one um, that, that Tip, you know, it, it, it could be a toss up there. I know Cork are down one or two with Hannah Looney, Linda Collins and the like. So it is one that's definitely there for Tip, but what by definite going off maybe the last couple of years, those are games that Tip should be winning. And you mentioned caught the van there as well. I'm always curious to think to hear what other people think um, on where Caught's best position is. Thomas, you've seen Caught play, you know, numerous times. Um, where do you think she should play for Tip? And what's her best position? And where do we will we get the most out of her? I suppose. Oh, I think unequivocally full forward. I I I think you keep her. You keep her within the scoring zone, which in Camo, uh, I mean, no, I suppose caught so scoring zone extends pretty far out the field. Um, and I know she can pull the strings from centre forward, but I'm not sure. I, I like, you know, her main asset lies in her sharp shooting. She is a brilliant sharp shooter. She will pick off points more so than um, now. She has vision and she is able to to pick a pass as well. Um, but I think plant her in full forward and allow her to to play a little bit more um, a role which is a little bit more expansive. In other words, give her a little bit of leeway uh, to drift out the field, um, and then maybe um, you know with with two the two corner forwards either side of her. You know we have pace there. We have the likes of Claude McIntyre. She often drifts out the field as well. Um, but you know, you you have Casey Hennessy. I, I think Roisin Howard is a perfect uh, is a perfect centre forward. I thought she was one of the best performers in the Gaelic grounds that day against Clare. She kind of thrives off winning, um, you know, winning ball from rooks and getting in in those tight and close spaces. She she really is quite adept at that, um, and and I actually think that creates a vacuum for Coit. In inside and full forward, it creates a bit of space there. I think they work off each other. Um, so I I would have caught in kind of a a full forward role, but essentially one that is a little bit more expansive and gives a little bit more leeway to to drift out the field. Kind of um, I kind of think of Joe Canning in his earlier days, you know, uh, with Galway, whereby he was full forward, but he would kind of you know, he would drift and, and pick off points from, from all kinds of places. Coit is kind of like that. Um, uh, so that's where, you know, that's where I would start her. Full forward is the starting place uh, and let her let her roam inside the scoring zone then. Yeah, I kind of agree with you there, Thomas, but I found in the Munster Championship, I thought she was staying very much in uh, full forward. Did you think that against Clare? I thought we didn't see as much of Coit as we would have maybe in last year's championship where she kind of likes to come out and roam around. I don't know what she instructed more, maybe to stay inside or... Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with what Thomas is saying there. I, I, I'd maybe start her in corner forward and let her do what she wants. Yeah, that's <laughs> or whatever she wants. Um, 
look, sometimes when the game, we know the game now is fought in the middle third, like it, there's just bodies in there. Sometimes the ball doesn't go in there as often as you'd like. You need caught involved in the game. Um, you need her to be on the ball as much as possible. Um, Clodagh and Claire Hogan, in fairness, in the games I've seen, they've held the ball up well and they've been really good options. Even when it's bad ball in, they just have the pace to get onto it and hold it up. And players coming on the overlap um, are really feeding off them really well. Um, but I, caught, is she, is she, look, she's scored a fair few goals in her time, but is, is her strength scoring goals? I, I don't think it is. Um, she's, she's more of a shooter than 40, 50 yards out. So I, I'd be more inclined to leave her further out the field, to be honest. Yeah, I suppose, you know, we should be looking at all the games and analysing them all, but I just think the first one on Saturday is so crucial and it's kind of, it's going to, won't decide our fate for the rest of the year, but um, it's very hard to look past it, you know, how we perform against Clare, whether we beat Clare, I think it's going to have a huge bearing on the rest of the year. I think if we can beat Clare on Saturday, I could see us beating Dublin, beating Waterford, beating Wexford, you know, and setting up a real crunch uh, top of the table game against Cork. If we were to lose against Clare, if we were to get any more setbacks in terms of injury and personnel and stuff, you know, whatever, we should still have enough for Dublin, albeit you're going away to them. Um, but I would fear for against Waterford, I would fear against Wexford. So, you know, I can't stress enough how important it is that the support comes out on Saturday, gets behind the girls, they need a lift, they need confidence, you know, even get off to a good start and get the confidence. And like a home support, I think is going to be crucial. And it's great, it's a double header, it's great, it's here in the rag, and there's no reason why we shouldn't get a good crowd. But I suppose looking past the first round, away to Dublin, Dublin, you know, I interviewed the manager, um, the Dublin manager after the league game here and they really wanted, as they said, they, they felt it was a missed opportunity not to beat uh, Tip here. Now, personally, I thought we were always in control of that game, but it was a close game in difficult conditions. Um, you know, they have serious players again like Ashley Maher and, you know, they will threaten you. you. You do have to turn up, obviously, and perform, but we should have enough for Dublin. Um, they suffered a heavy defeat against Kilkenny in the Leinster Championship recently, 5-11 to 11 points. Uh, the Waterford then, look, I thought Waterford maybe going by the league, that they didn't win the Division 2 league, that maybe they were after taking a step backwards, but put in a great performance against Cork in the Munster Championship. Um, there was very little between in them between that game for long periods of time. And they look to be coming good again. Obviously, they have Beck Cart, Neve, Neve Rocket, um, Lorraine Bray, lots of talent again. So... We definitely can't um, take them for granted. They've, they've always been a tough opposition the last few years. Wexford then, again, you know, took us a while to get over Wexford last year at home in, in Semper Stadium. Um, after winning the Division Two League, you know, they were beaten by Kilkenny in the Leinster Championship as well. Um, I think they lost 319 to 112 there. Uh, so... Um, in the Leinster semi-final so obviously that was a setback but I suppose provisional championship doesn't you know I won't say it doesn't matter but you know it's usually league is the, is the priority and your know, championship is the priority and then the league so can't read too much into that but we know what Wexford are capable of great club teams down there like Zane Akern from Outlet Ballock and their key forwards Kiro O'Connor Sarah O'Connor also there so you know, it's not a straightforward group by any means and just the, the match on Saturday I suppose is the crucial one so um we might turn our attention now to the to the junior panel, junior um, championship. Uh, the Glen Dimplex All Ireland Junior Championship begins this Saturday as well. Um, we're at home to Cavan. I suppose uh, this is new territory for Tipperary. We've been obviously competing at intermediate level for the last couple of years. We relegated back to junior last year, and um, we did uh, maintain our Division Two status last year and again this year. So we competed in the Division Two League this year. Um, got a good draw against Westmead, beaten by Kilkenny, suffered a heavy defeat against Waterford. But, um, you know, one Beck Kildare then in the relegate, lost to Leash actually in the first relegation game in Beck Kildare. So that was a lift. Went into the Munster Championship, I suppose, thinking, you know, we had been playing Division 2 League, Munster Championship probably maybe went in a bit, I won't say cocky, but... You know, even from my point of view, I thought, you know, we'd be, we'd be really competing at Munster and, you know, Claire beat us that day and deservedly so. Um, probably not, noteworthy to say that it's one Claire management that are over both teams, so you could see the similarity in their play and their setup and the organisation there. But um, I suppose the last to Claire in the, in the first round of Junior Championship and has shown that this is not going to be a straightforward championship for Tipperary. No, it's going to be tough. Um, look, there's... In the massive turnover of players and the management, as I said, and 
Look, we, we, we were kind of spoiled with the second team for the last three or four years. There was a lot of good players on it, and we've seen them making the step up to senior now. So, look, no, no more so than our uh, hurling team. There's just an awful turnover of players, and it takes time for them to bet in. Like, it's a bit new experience for a lot of them. I know we have a couple of experienced players that are actually made matter and meet from Lockley, but a lot of young girls there that are getting their first taste of the action as well. So, it's, it's going to be a tough year, and hopefully they, they can come out and um, do themselves justice. Thomas, I'm sure you're familiar with Ethan Lockney, um, uh, played for years with Tipperary, um, you know, I suppose a stalwart in her club there, Shannon Rovers, and, you know, it seems to be better she's getting in the last couple of years. Um, she's probably fitness-wise in the best uh, shape for life, and um, she's a key player for the Tipperary junior team on the freeze um, as a leader there in attack, and, you know, she's going to be an important player for them on Saturday against Cavan. Yeah, she's indispensable and she has been, you know, she's been a brilliant servant uh, to our club, but also a brilliant ambassador for the game, I think. Um, you know, and, and demonstrated the way in which a player, you know, um, previously played senior, you know, has gone back to intermediate now, but like is continuing to excel. And as you say, it seems to be, you know, steadily improving. Um, which is testament to her own work ethic and dedication. But she brings a wealth of experience. And what I think she brings, her defining characteristic, I think anytime I've seen her play and, and you know, from what I've read, is her intelligence. Um, you know, like her, uh, uh, and, you know, obviously part of a brilliant Shannon Rover side that reached the intermediate final, county final last year. But her intelligence and her ability to, to manage not just not just the game, but the players around her. Uh, I mean, I think you can't understand how important that is for, I think, younger players. And there is a lot of there are a lot of younger players on that Shannon Rovers team, for example, who would who would you know, uh, Aoife would lead by example, but she would also provide that bit of guidance and advice to players on the field in terms of directing them you know and uh and marshalling them and, and that's really important that senior players are able to do that you need you know when people talk of leadership uh, you know i often kind of you know often it's described in terms of these riveting kind of speeches inspiring speeches in the huddle before the game but i think real leadership you know as well as standing up and playing yourself is you know having the intelligence and the composure on the field to spot what is happening to 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 identify the direction of play, to identify the trends in the game, and to to encourage players around them to to respond to um to those changes. And I think that's what Eva brings um very much to to both the tip setup and to the Shannon Rover setup. It's that intelligence um and that presence of mind on the field. Okay, so I suppose. Like I said, um, people probably aren't overly familiar with some of the, the teams we're playing in the Junior Championship this year. Um, just that Wexford won the Junior All-Ireland last year, they bet our man the final, so that's Wexford's second team. They're gone up intermediate. So the way the groups were done, there was four teams seeded then. So our man, Ross Common and Clare, who all reached the semi-finals last year, were seeded along with Tipperary, I suppose, who dropped down from intermediate. So we're in a group with Clare and our man, Ross Common, are on the other side. So Clare definitely looked to be the toughest team in our group and judging by the performance in their Munster Championship, so they bet us in the first round, then they bet Cork, now in fairness is Cork's third team, they bet Cork 112 to 6, um, and then they had a big win over Waterford, 14 points to 4, so that'll be obviously Waterford's second team. So, you know, Cavan though at the same time um, are after winning Division 3 league this year, so they're going in with a good, with a bit of farm, with a bit of success, a bit of silverware behind them. Um, that's who we're playing first, obviously, on Saturday at 2 o'clock. Then we're away to Mayo. Again, I knew very little about Mayo, but doing a bit of research, you know, they, um, they had, hadn't had an adult team for a couple of years and they got going again last year, won the Nancy Murray Cup um, last year, so promoted up to junior this year. And they've also won the Division 4 League this year. So obviously there's a good group of players there. There's a good management set up. Um, they mean business and, um, you know, travelling to them as well. Again, you don't know what to expect. Um, then we have the home game against Clare. We know what to expect with Clare. They were very good here in the Junior Championship, but we competed with them for a long, long time. And I didn't think it was one of our better displays, so I wouldn't have any fear playing with them again. And then the last game then is against Waterford. Um, again, like I said, Clare looked to be the toughest in that group. So getting off to a winning start, Miriam, again, will be crucial. And, you know, the team, I suppose, 
the new management, uh, new panel, you know, mixed results, they probably they just need a bit of confidence, they need to get a win to kickstart their year. Yeah, I think it is important, you know, to build a bit of momentum through those games. And, you know, I don't think tip of anything to fear. They have been competing at intermediate level and the last couple of years. And there are a couple of those um, standing members. You know, you have Kira Hulan, Kira McHugh from Burgess, Mags Quigley there, you have Claire Stakelum, Sinead Marr, you know, you have Kira Cummins, um, you know, Clara Horgan, Ashley Sheedy, like there are a lot of those players that had been, you know, on that intermediate panel, had been training at, um, you know, senior level um, the last couple of years. So there is a core bunch there, you know, there are new players to it. There are a new management team there as well. So I suppose in ways, um, you know, we don't know what to expect at junior level, but I don't think Tip should be fearful of any of them um, teams that they are coming up against, um, you know, they, they will go into those games um, with respect for each of them teams, especially, I think, after playing clear here in, in drag and being bet. So they know that, you know, there's nothing, you know, to get complacent about, but I wouldn't at the same time be fearful of, you know, going out competing against any of them either, you know. Yeah, and I suppose it's just two teams that come out of that group. so. They can't afford any slip up slip ups and uh, um I'm just looking there, like Miriam mentioned a lot of players there. Kira Cummins from Turtle Sarsfields, um I, you might remember won the Irons Fitz family a couple of years ago. She's some workhorse there. Um I think her best position is midfield. We've seen management player in the forwards and midfield, but her her work and her energy levels there in midfield, you know, are, are fantastic for the club and the county. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. And I remember seeing her in the intermediate county final a few years ago just a bundle of energy, it's really hard to keep it in to her, but there's, there's loads of experience there, as Miriam was saying, you know, Kira McHugh is a seasoned operator at club level and she knows how to win games, even Mags Cleary from, or Mags Quigley from, from Toom, I, I, I've seen, seen her a lot playing underage for Toom and, you know, she, she's, a, she's a solid operator there, we, we've been struggling, I'd seen her for the last couple of years, but she's always given 7, 8 out of 10 performances there, centre back for us, so, you know, there, there's youth there at the end of the day. This team's about bringing through the youth and um, giving them exposure to a high level against good teams. Um, and I think we've a good strength and depth in tip now at the moment. The club game's very strong, so it, it's good to give them exposure at county level against these teams. A lot of counties' first teams as well, so it's, it's, a, it's a good level for them. So um, it's, it can only be positive and hopefully they go well this year. Yeah, and like a player that I suppose I would have seen a bit with club, but hadn't seen that much, but also impressed with was Amy Cross from Cashel. Um, Cashel have some fantastic players coming through, and it's good to see the likes of her playing with Tip and uh, playing at other level. And look, you know, Ray and, and the management team have put in huge work since the start of the year. Um, they've played a serious amount of challenge matches, training. I know they were away on a, you know, a training bonding, bonding thing in... Uh, is it Lake Durg or something like that last Durg Isle, sorry, last weekend and you know all this all this is uh, obviously helps and it's all part of preparation and you know there's been no stone left unturned there. And again, we just plead to people, I suppose, to come early to the rag on Saturday, you know, make a day out of it. Um, the juniors are against Cavan at two PM. Um, should be a fantastic game. I'm really looking forward to it. And, um, you know, let's try and get off to a winning start. I suppose one thing I'm interested to hear from um, both of you, um, Thomas, we've seen in the hurling, seen it, I've really seen the camogie this year, um, you know, players, I suppose, the war backs playing in the forwards, like Keir Maher was always a, a forward for me. She's been playing their wing back. Um, you know, is it a modern inter-county hurler? Should they be able to play any position? You know, you see the last day with, uh, you know, Dylan Quirk was midfield, another day he could be forwards, another day he could be backs. Um, and I, we see Claire Stakelum again, when I seen her with Tip Intermediates, she was a wing back, but you know, Tip Juniors are playing her now in the full forward line. Is that something that every inter-county player should be able to adjust and play in any position? Or would you rather see players just sticking to one position and not being chopping and changing like that? No, I think that versatility is key. And I mean, you know, you, to take another example, you take the Limerick Clare game yesterday, Kyle Hayes, um, you know, rotated into his his former role of uh, of centre forward. Now I know he dropped back out the field. John Conlon, a former centre forward, now a rock of centre stability, a centre back for Clare. And there are plenty of examples across 
intercounty camogie as well. I think, you know, that kind of comes down, I think, to the perceptiveness of the manager um, in terms of where a player, what the strengths of a particular player are and where they can be best applied. Um, and, you know, it, it's not, you know, it, it's not a number one requirement that as a player, you, you have to be versatile. You have plenty of specialists still out there. Um, you know, you have specialist quarterbacks who who thrive in, in that particular role and rarely stray, you know, beyond their own 45. Um, and similarly, you have, you know, you have forwards. Um, I'll take another hurling example. Look at Aaron Galan. Like, he, he rarely strays out beyond the 45, you know. Uh, and he's probably in line for hurler of the year this year if he keeps going the way he is. And there are plenty of examples in camogie, hurling, ladies football, Gaelic football, of that. Uh, but I think ultimately it comes down to the perceptiveness um, of the manager. Uh, I, I think, you know, I'm trying to think about this tip team and and are there, you know, could you use particular players in different roles? Um, not entirely sure. Like we had the debate about Quote Devan. I think Enda is probably right, you know, start her in corner forward and let her do, you know, what she likes after that. Um, but I, I take, you know, Kier, the likes of Kier de Mar is a good example. Uh, Quivamar is a player as well who who I think would be compatible with a number of different positions. Um, and, you know, there there are others like her. So, I mean, I, I think one of the things about TIP this year is their strength and depth in their panel. Um, and, uh, like, that, that is one thing they have really put a put a huge emphasis on. They, they, they put the emphasis on developing the panel and having numerous options at their disposal. And they will need that because, I mean, you listed off the games at the start there. It's a pretty taxing schedule. It's a pretty exhausting schedule when you think about it. And they'll need to chop and change regularly enough, both within games and from game to game. So, like, I mean, do I anticipate any major positional switches at this stage? Not really. Bar, bar there's something radical, you know, uh, bar there's an injury to 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 a key player or or something like that, um, but I think certainly uh, it is a trend in in Gaelic games at the moment that players are uh, players are becoming increasingly versatile, and I think it's to be welcomed as well. Um, you know, I think it's in part due to the manager, but it's in part due to the the player as well and the conditioning. Um, the conditioning level that they're at because they're able to to adapt to these different positions and then i just suppose a similar question to you um like we've we haven't seen too much of arena friday neve Tracy, two players that for me can play anywhere from the half back line to the half forward line um do you think they'll feature at the weekend for, for the seniors yeah i think so i think i think arena has been making some good substitutes appearance and uh Neve, in fairness to her, she, she's, she's coming back in with the tip team recently as well. And just, you have that group of players there, you need 10 or 11 that can fit into half forward line midfield, half back line, that are able to battle there just to be in that zone and they're able to win ball. And they're just really combative in there. I think Arena has been really missed. I think she's just, she's a very clever hurler and she gets through an amount of work. I, I, I think you need to start her anyway. Um, Neve, in fairness, um, the last couple of years she's been kind of on and off the team under Bill. Um, but like she's she's very versatile, like she's a great option coming off the bench, like even if she's not starting. So look as Thomas is saying, look, tight schedule. That's the benefit now of the people that Bill has brought in and given them game time. You'll be able to chop and change maybe two or three girls every other game, give them game time and you know they're going to do a job. Um, so I think that's gonna to stand to us going down the line. Um, versus the likes of Clare who have 16, 17, maybe 18 that they've been playing consistently for the last, since the whole league and, and, and Munster Championship. So, um, yeah, you, you, need, you need that versatility, obviously, and you need all the good teams over the years have been able to interchange players uh, pretty seamlessly. Barrier, Bar probably the only player we can, can't do without, I'd say, is Mary Ryan, fullback. Um, um, she's pretty indispensable there for me, but um, other than that, I think we've we've got options everywhere. Yeah, I suppose the junior team probably have a bit more of a settled team. Um, you know, it's probably maybe even a bit more easier to predict coming into the weekend. Um, but you know, I probably 
maybe I'm a bit of a traditionalist. I kind of like to see going into the championship in good form, settled team. Probably hasn't been that case, but you know, you look at Waterford there and the hurling there, Miriam. You know, for me, they were the best challengers for Limerick and against to you know to win in All Ireland to, uh, aside from Limerick, and now they mightn't even you know get out of Munster. So. Are we putting too much emphasis on, you know, winning the first game? You know, you could win the first game and you could lose the second one. You're back to square one. Or, you know, is it just one game at a time? Or do you think winning for both the junior and the senior is crucial at the weekend? Yeah, I think it's important to get off to a winning start. And I think just for the seniors, just talking about them for a minute, that it's important just to get a bit of consistency back into it. And just that bit of um, belief maybe back into the panel as well. Um, you know, we know now that Claire, our competitors there, um, they are going to be challenging Tip. Um, and I think Tip won't take them for granted. They've learned a lot from those two games. And, you know, coming into the weekend, you know, they know what to expect, maybe, you know, from certain players. They know what type of game Claire are going to bring. So I think Tip, you know, they're going to be more prepared going into this game at the weekend. But I do think in ways, it is important to get off to that winning start, but saying that like the hurling championship, even down to the last weekend, you know, it was still, you know, relatively open in, as to who's going to go through and different things like that. So Camogie in a way is going to be similar to that. Three teams are going to get through. Um, you know, your top team obviously have the advantage there in being straight into a semi-final, but often that can work against them too. Um, some teams might prefer the quarterfinal in that to get an extra game, um, obviously provided to get over that quarter final. But you know, I think tip they are in a position that they they um they should be in, in quarter final stages anyways. So I think it is important to get that momentum back into it. Okay, thanks Miriam. Look, we're gonna leave it for there. Um we could talk all night about it, but I suppose it's all uh down to what happens on Saturday when the ball is thrown in in the Glen Dimplex All-Ireland Junior and Senior Championship. Um, I, for, I certainly, for one, are really looking forward to it. Um, we hope you are too. Um, we hope you've enjoyed uh, today's podcast. Thanks again to Enda, to Thomas and Miriam, as always, for joining us here and for their fantastic contribution. And um, we'll see you in the County Camogie Grounds on Saturday. And just finally, obviously, to thank Kevin behind the scenes here. He's set up all this, the cameras, the lights, the sound, and uh, doing a brilliant job as always. Kevin Hanley, thanks very much. And um, uh, we'll see you Saturday in the County Camogie Grounds in the right. <laughs>